Titus 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Christ Jesus, for the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness, in the hope of eternal life that God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. In his own time, he has revealed his word in the preaching with which I was entrusted by the command of God our Savior. To Titus, my true son in our common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. The reason I left you in Crete was to set right what was left undone and, as I directed you, to appoint elders in every town. An elder must be blameless to the husband of one wife with faithful children who are not accused of wildness or rebellion. As an overseer of God's household, he must be blameless, not arrogant, not hot-tempered, not an excessive drinker, not a bully, not greedy for money, but hospitable, loving what is good, sensible, righteous, holy, self-controlled, holding to the faithful message as taught, so that he will be able both to encourage with sound teaching and to refute those who contradict it. For there are many rebellious people, full of empty talk and deception, especially those from the circumcision party. It is necessary to silence them. They are ruining entire households by teaching what they shouldn't in order to get money dishonestly. Some of their very own prophets said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. For this reason, rebuke them sharply so that they may be sound in the faith and may not pay attention to Jewish myths or the commands of people who reject the truth. To the pure, everything is pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. In fact, both their mind and conscience are defiled. They claim to know God, but they deny Him by their works. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for any good work. Titus 2 But you are to proclaim things consistent with sound teaching. Older men are to be self-controlled, worthy of respect, sensible and sound in faith, love and endurance. In the same way, older women are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not slaves to excessive drinking. They are to teach what is good so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands and to love their children, to be self-controlled, pure, workers at home, kind and in submission to their husbands, so that God's word will not be slandered. In the same way, encourage the young men to be self-controlled in everything. Make yourself an example of good works with integrity and dignity in your teaching. Your message is to be sound beyond reproach, so that any opponent will be ashamed because he doesn't have anything bad to say about us. Slaves are to submit to their masters in everything and to be well-pleasing, not talking back or stealing, but demonstrating utter faithfulness so that they may adorn the teaching of God our Savior in everything. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, instructing us to deny godlessness and worldly lusts and to live in a sensible, righteous, and godly way in the present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave Himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for Himself a people for His own possession, eager to do good works. Proclaim these things, encourage and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Titus 3. Remind them to submit to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to slander no one, to avoid fighting, and to be kind, always showing gentleness to all people. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, 
hateful, detesting one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us, not by works of righteousness that we had done, but according to His mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He poured out His Spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by His grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. This saying is trustworthy. I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed God might be careful to devote themselves to good works. These are good and profitable for everyone. But avoid foolish debates, genealogies, quarrels, and disputes about the law because they are unprofitable and worthless. Reject a divisive person after a first and second warning. For you know that such a person has gone astray and is sinning. He is self-condemned. When I send Artemis or Tychicus to you, make every effort to come to me in Nicopolis, because I have decided to spend the winter there. Diligently help Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey, so that they will lack nothing. Let our people learn to develop themselves to good works for pressing needs so that they will not be unfruitful. All those who are with me send you greetings. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with all of you. So Paul writes this letter to Titus, one of his disciples. He loves this guy and he depends on this guy. He's giving this guy instructions in what kind of a man needs to be present in the church among the group of leaders. These people are called elders. They cannot be fake. You got to test them. Paul is telling them, look into their lives, man. Pick at them. Ask people around them. Who is this man made of? And he's got to be old enough so that there's like a history. Can't be a new convert. In the Old Testament, when the prophets would write their accusations, they included the elders in the same group with the priests and, and the kings. However, no one man can handle a group of people, so there has to be assistance. Paul says they just can't be fakes. He describes the character of an older man to be just beautiful, honest, authentic. And also to the older ladies of the congregation, he instructs, These women must teach the young women. Paul tells Titus to remember that we are all justified by faith. And this is a measurably good thing. So the person affected by this grace should occupy their time doing good things. And this seems entirely reasonable. These things, they are called good works. And they say, do good works. Paul teaches each of his churches to be active in their existence as Christians, as believers in Jesus. And then he explains what that is. Living by the Holy Spirit, by the fruits of love. This is, this is instead of being a crazy person. It, it couldn't be more clear. But then again, we know from these same readings that the person capable of this life is a person reborn through the Holy Spirit. So my question is this. If a spirit descends upon a person who believes, and this happens in such a way that it is extraordinary, and then wonderful things become apparent, why does a person say no to that? Thank you for watching. The NQE is out.